For the next big project I want to do, I want to build myself a fifth axis tronion. It's something I already would like to build and have from the beginning. I start designing the vertical milling machine. So now it's time to to add this option and see how it how it's gonna turn out. I want to try to make a small video series about it, which every part I will see I will show you uh, the machining seems like you guys like to to see the machine making parts so let's see how it goes and maybe in the future I can do more of these videos um, last month I started designing on it this is pretty much how it's gonna look like it's a trunnion with a BC uh, configuration so that means the table gonna rotate under the y, y axis and the table will spin underneath the Z C axis those axes will be uh, driven by these second-handed uh, harmonic drives from harmonic drive from Germany they are 25 size and they have a reduction of 1 to 100 they will be driven by these 100 watt servos from Delta so I also choose to use Delta just like the other servos in the machine so everything is the same brand the drivers are the same to look the cabinet keep everything this the same I made a design of the trunnion with the use of uh, belt connections first I wanted to try to fit the servo of the C-axis inside of the main housing but it I need to make some kind of angular connection which probably gonna cause backlash and stuff so I decided to keep it more simple and put the motor outside and use a belt connection to go through the pivot point back inside with another belt connection to the harmonic drive I'm gonna use HDD belts which I think they're pretty much backless free, pretty pretty easy to use. So let's see how that goes. For the B axis, there's also a belt connection, so the motor is fit on the back side, inside of a small enclosure, which gonna have uh, connectors inside, so I can easily get rid of the fifth axis from the table and just easily disconnect it. On top, I want to mount a 125 millimeter. A fixture plate where I can mount a, a three jaw on it or some kind of dovetail fixture. Like I said, I want to try to make some videos about the machining. The first part I want to make is the bottom plate, which is the most easiest part, and will work myself up from there. Make the two side plates, probably first make the B drive finished and then work on the biggest part the part that's gonna hold the C axis in place I wanna try to do some uh, machining footage from inside the machine last video I made was to test it with the camera inside of the machine which had some trouble with the flood coolant so I made myself a small air knife on the 3D printer see, see how it goes if it can blow off the the water of the camera better than just use a small tube to blow air at it. The first part I want to make is the base plate. I bought some tooling plate for the base so I don't have to machine the top and bottom side. I only have to drill some holes in it, countersink it and then cut the final dimension on the outside. So the first thing I want to do on this part is drill the four holes that will hold the trunnion to the table, drill that in a vise, and then mount the whole plate to the table on some parallels, and from there cut the outside contour in one go. So let's move to the machine and drill the first holes. The material is now in the vise. The vise is a little bit oddly placed on the table since 
the left side of the table have been used for some other fixture. So let's indicate the part, drill the holes and then get rid of the vise. The center point of the workpiece coordinate system now has been placed and set. I always take the, the center part of the stock, so if the material is uh, a little bit big, bigger than ordered, the end, end mill doesn't have to take a super big bite on the left side of the part and have it easy on the right side. It's spread on all sides. Uh, first, now I need to load in the right size drill. So let's call the drill, uh, put in a new drill and then uh, touch it off. I put in the new size drill, now let's uh, touch it off. I already showed this before in one of my tool change videos. There is a macro that um, you have to give in tool number, a prox length, and then just hit OK. And then the machine will touch off itself. You can see a blow of uh, coolant that gets stuck inside the nozzle, blow off. So now the, the drill is set, let's make a program, drill the holes, count the bore it, jam for it, done. Here we have the small program, it's first drilling the holes, uh, adaptive milling the counter bore for the head of the, the bolts, finish it with a contour and put a chamfer on the edge. So first operation of this part is now done. Now let's uh, get it out of the vise, get the vise off the table and mount this piece straightly to the table. I made a small thinking error. I thought that the, the bolt pattern of this plate will also match the slots like this, but I designed the plate to be mounted like this but then the machine travel is not big enough to uh, do the whole contour in once so I have to do it like this clamp it first on the sides uh, machine this side and this side then reclamp it on this side and then machine the other outer parts and drill the holes there so a little bit more work but 
we'll be fine. The first part of this operation is uh, roughing the sides with a super high retract so I don't have collision on the on the clamps on the side and then do two finishing patches on the long side. Let's see how it goes. I now have moved the clamps to the other side of the part, so now I have access to machine this side, this side, and drill the holes for the side plates. So machining is now finished on this side, let's get it off the table and see how it turned out. So here is the first finished part, it's most probably the most easiest part to make. Um, so this is the end of uh, part one of this uh, Tronion build series, please let me know if you liked it or you think something that should be improved. I don't believe the the footage of the camera inside the camera inside of the milling machine was was pretty good so I need to see if I can improve it. I believe my coolant is running a little bit rich right now because of the water vaporized. So maybe if it's a little bit thinner the the footage will get better because now I believe that the coolant will stuck on the camera and the air is not strong enough to blow it off. So if it will be a little bit thinner maybe it goes better. Let's see. Thanks for watching and see you in part two.